Happy New Year. Art Visions has been airing on NBC 13 for over four months and on Charter Cable WOTM for over a year. We are one of the top rated independent television series in the state of Alabama. We have many exciting programs coming towards you this year, including episodes from the McWayne Center and other important individuals from our community. raised up piece by piece by piece in the uh, summer and fall of 2003. How did we free ourselves as a state and have school systems when we can't afford to pay for our children? My name is Barbara Kelly. I'm Director of Education at Vulcan Park and we want everyone to come here and visit and see Vulcan. He's now 100 years old. He was made for the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair uh, 100 years ago. He was designed by sculptor Giuseppe Moretti, and he is meant to highlight the iron and steel industry of Birmingham. Birmingham was booming in 1900 and 1903. About 40,000 people lived here, and the founding fathers wanted to show off Alabama to the rest of the world, and so they decided that we needed to have an, ex an exhibit at the World's Fair. So they contracted with the sculptor in 1903. In a short seven months, the sculptor created Vulcan. He's the largest cast iron statue in the world. He's made out of cast iron, and the iron is right from the Red Mountain that Vulcan is sitting on today. So his contract was signed November 24th, uh, 1903, and Vulcan was completed June 7th, 1904. So a very, very short time. But the purpose of Vulcan was a couple things. It was to highlight the working people, Vulcan is the mythological, uh, Roman mythological god of the forge, and he was the god that uh, made all the, the armory, the weapons, the jeweler for the other gods. He was the big hit at the World's Fair. He won the grand prize, uh, the sculptor won a prize, the originator, the businessman who thought of the idea won a prize too. Uh, he was up there through December, from June through December of 1904, and then the fair was over. A couple cities offered to buy him, but Birmingham said, no, we want him back. So they sent him back on a train and kind of threw him by the, the rails and he lay there in pieces for 18 months till Birmingham tried to figure out what to do with him. In the 30s though, a big move was made to get him up here on this mountain where he is today because they wanted to get him away from the fair. He was also put together wrong at the fair, so for 30 years his arms were backwards so he couldn't even hold his spear. Uh, but they brought him up here, the Qantas Club spearheaded that, also with funds from the WPA. Um, he was finally put back in his rightful place on top of the, the mountain where his iron ore actually came from. Uh, that was at 3839. They had a huge celebration, went on for days uh, to welcome uh, Vulcan back up on this mountain. Um, the sandstone tower that's still there today, uh, the sandstone was taken from the Botanical Gardens just a mile or so away. Um, they brought in Italian craftsmen who then uh, built the tower and built the walls, some of which are still around today. Um, during the 40s, Vulcan became uh, a, a, a traffic safety icon too. As many people who grew up in Birmingham remember the torch that he held and when it was red, someone had died in a traffic fatality and when it was green, everything was fine. That was supposed to be a six month temporary thing too and that stayed for about 50 years. But in the early 90s, Vulcan began cracking apart because what happened was when they put him up on the tower, they filled him to his chest with concrete to stabilize him on his new tower. And unfortunately, concrete and iron contract at different rates with the temperature. So the concrete pushed against the, the iron and began cracking it. So in the early 90s, they did some studies. They said it's becoming very, very dangerous. In 99, they closed the park because they were afraid Vulcan, you know, something would happen, a piece would fall on a visitor. Uh, in 99, the Vulcan Park Foundation was formed in order to raise money to get Vulcan back up uh, and fix them up, renovate the park. And so in 2003, Vulcan went back up. Robinson Iron um, took him down and also fixed him up. Uh, they uh, recast a new spear for him to hold, so that's new. They recast another hammer. And he was raised up piece by piece by piece in the uh, summer and fall of 2003. And the park was then renovated. We have a brand new visitor center where you can come and learn about the industry and the early days of Birmingham right through to the present. Uh, we have interesting uh, educational markers that are out there too that you can walk around and read. We can see the entrance to a mine. We're over a mine, by the way, in the visitor center. 
Um, as far as volunteers, we, we always need volunteers. We have several roles that volunteers can play. Um, we have meters and greeters that sit up there and greet people, direct them where to go, um, ask you know, any questions that people have that our volunteers can answer. We also have some volunteers that like to do administrative work for us, mailings and answer the phone, this kind of thing. Um, we also have docents. A docent is a museum teacher and a docent uh, will take school children around. We have one hour tours that we offer to school children and the docent will take them um, all around 30 minutes outside and 30 minutes inside and the kids learn um, about the history of Birmingham and the history of, of Vulcan. So that's a very important role and, and we're always looking for more good docents, more good volunteers, so anyone that wants to volunteer can certainly give us a call. Vulcan Park has won numerous awards. We are very pleased to have won uh, two People Choice Awards, one for the best view, which we know of course we have in Birmingham. Uh, we have the Mayor's Award for Excellence, which is exciting to Mayor uh, Kincaid of Birmingham. And we, we won this. This is the Excellence in Construction Award. We actually didn't win this technically ourselves. The Bryce Construction that, that built this building won this award. But it's a very prestigious award and uh, we were very pleased for them since we worked so closely with them to build this building. If you can hear a lot of noise, that's a good thing. We have a lot of visitors today, which we're thrilled. We're open seven days a week. We are open on Monday through Saturday from 10 until 6 and then on Sundays from 1 until 6. But what's exciting too is you can come up here at night now. The museum is closed, the visitor center is closed at 6, but from 6 till 10 you can come and go up on the, the elevator and overlook all the city from Vulcan's balcony. So that's exciting. It's, it's, it's a ticket, you come in and get your ticket and then you can go on up and, and see Vulcan close up and look at the entire panorama of the city. Located inside the Vulcan Center is a changing exhibit gallery where we will be hosting art exhibitions throughout the year. We are very excited to open an exhibition the end of January titled Moretti's Masterpieces in the Magic City. We will be featuring sculptures as well as photographic reproductions of other sculptures found inside Birmingham. Uh, we have become a wonderful spot for weddings and receptions and parties and meetings and breakfast meetings and that's a uh, a wonderful thing for people to know because the view is of course spectacular particularly at night and we have a lovely stone patio outside the the room where people can congregate outside also we also uh, people can come people have tented up on the the plaza if you have a really large party uh, you can tent up there and have parties outside and downstairs and, and, and everywhere okay I do want to tell you about the exhibits inside the visitor center when you enter the visitor center the first thing you'll see is a very tall wall that shows you the different types of iron objects that were made in Birmingham at one time. We have fire hydrants and sewer covers, but it's a good illustration for particularly children to realize that Birmingham was a leading producer, particularly of iron pipe, and so it shows you all the different things that were produced in Birmingham in the early days. The second room you'll enter is the iron room, and we have the three minerals that are necessary to produce iron, which is iron and limestone and coal and the room illustrates how the three ingredients come together to form molten iron. And there's even a video of molten iron coming out of a furnace, so kids can see that. Um, the next thing you'll see is our company store, which is a replica of the company store. All these companies that were in Birmingham in the early days had their own stores. Uh, everything you needed was right in your company town. You had uh, the post office, the store, the church, the school, the house, everything was owned by the company. But we have a replica of the company store where kids can see what their grandparents or great-grandparents would have seen when they went to the store. We're in the process of getting a cash register in there, which is not there yet, but we, we have found an old one. And we also have some of the money that was used because they often did not use U.S. currency. The, each company store had their own currency that the, the mother would use to go shopping with. The next room is our building Birmingham. We have some of the founding fathers' portraits of Birmingham. And then we have uh, some videos of early days in Birmingham and some of the early houses that are still around. Um, the next room is our Vulcan room, and this is the room that tells you all about Vulcan. Uh, that tells you about the casting process and how Vulcan was actually made. After that room, you go into the Depression, which shows um, the economy of Birmingham totally almost coming to a halt. The iron and steel industry, of course, almost came to a halt during that time. People lost their jobs. Uh, the next room is World War II 
and although war is horrible, what it did for the iron and steel industry in Birmingham was brought it back. And people were once again working in the iron and steel industry. Um, Birmingham and Alabama retrofitted planes, retrofitted um, ships. Women went back to work, or not back to work, went to work for the first time when the men went off to war. So the World War really did help the economy of Birmingham. The next area is a little housing boom in the 50s and the economy coming back. Um, you turn the corner and we have a segment on the civil rights era in Birmingham. Since we're trying to trace the history of Birmingham, that's such an important part of what happened in Birmingham that that is included also from very familiar images that people have seen. And then you come out into a very bright area where you have Birmingham today, the walls are windows, and you look over and you see the city. So what we've done is we've traced the early days of Birmingham when most people here worked in the iron and steel industry. And then you, as you go through the exhibit, and you, you come out to Birmingham today, and you look out over the city, and of course today, we're UAB Medical Services, a financial center. So you trace the whole history in, in our museum. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Art Vision. Uh, Vulcan is a, an important symbol to the city of Birmingham. We want everyone to come up here and appreciate Vulcan, appreciate the green space, have a picnic up here, visit us, learn about the city, and, and it's so important to learn about the place where you live. So come visit us. This television series was created 17 years ago to respect everyone, all artists and all of the organizations that support the arts and shows humanity in our society. In this copycat world, we have seen that you see one television series and then you see imitations on the other networks. This does not show respect for arts and humanity. We need to respect the creativity of everyone. Another unique aspect of this television series is we give the films that we shoot and create back to the organizations. What better way to show respect for their own creativity? No other program, no other network can do this because of legal restrictions. We own our own films. We are an independent television series so we can do this legally and we want to do this ethically because we want to show true respect for the arts and humanity. Imitation in reality is not a form of flattery. It's pirating the original concepts, the work and dedication of this television series. When there was no television series out there that showed respect for everyone, for all the organizations, for all creative visions that exist, you know one needed to exist. The Birmingham Emancipation <clears throat> Association recognizes Congressman Artur Davis for his outstanding leadership as representative for Alabama's 7th Congressional District. We're presenting this on January 1st, year 2005. May God bless you. Thank you, Reverend. Let me thank all who are gathered in his midst today. There was a time in our history when one type of men and women felt themselves superior enough and powerful enough and strong enough to look down on another. And I just wonder this. Because from, from our vantage point, they look strange and curious today. It looks strange and curious that we had to have a president sign a pen to free anybody. And I just wonder this. 40 years from now, 50 years from now, what is it that we do today that will make us wonder, how did this happen? <clears throat> you know, might it be that 40 years from now, somebody would wonder, how did we gain political power and have no wealth? You know, some, somebody 40 years from now might wonder, how did we free ourselves as a state 
and have school systems where we can't afford to pay for our children. Amen. One, one day, 40 years from now, somebody might wonder, how did we try to change our Constitution yeah. to take out the rotten in it? And people say no. All right. yeah. So I just wonder on this Emancipation Proclamation uh -huh. Day, just one good thought. What is it that we are today that ought to make us lift up our eyes to the heavens and say, God, free us from this. Let us walk a different path as we move into this new year so that I will always keep my eyes toward the stars to see those who have not been seen, to hear voices that have not been heard, and to fill in my heart the aspirations of those whose needs have not been met. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. probably one of only four or five across the country to serve in an area, metropolitan areas, the south of Birmingham greater. Um, she's from 23rd Street Baptist Church. She has two children. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you, to those who don't know her, and honor Police Chief Annetta Nunn. for distinguished leadership and services in law enforcement within the Birmingham community. Let me present this to you on behalf of our organization. God bless you. Don't y'all be jealous now. And my soul go, it was never to be the chief of police. I only wanted to serve and make a difference in my community and that continues to go on and I want to do the best job possible. I want to be an example for those who are coming behind me. Yes. As our congressman said, what will people say 40 years from now? Yeah. And I'm surrounded with uh, Bob Boswell, who was here in the day when it was really, really tough Amen. for an African American to be a policeman in Birmingham. Oh, yeah. He serves as an inspiration along with others. For me. And that's what I want to leave behind for others. Right. So we have great witnesses. As Pastor Sutton said, we as Christians can't hang our heads and say we can't do this and we can't do that. Because with God, all things are possible. And 40 years from now, we hope that the new story won't be that our homicides have been reduced because we have 61. We would like to say that it's been reduced because we didn't have any. Thank you. He's been the PAT director Probably yeah, all, probably most of his life, I guess. Uh, Bob has served as PAT director since 1980, and he volunteered from 1970 to 1980. He's graduated from Fairview High School, a UAB here in Birmingham. He has a Juris Doctor degree in law from Birmingham School of Law. He has four children. My friend, Robert Bosworth. The Birmingham Emancipation Association recognizes Mr. Robert Boswell an appreciation for over 25 years of dedicated service to over 20,000 youth as PAT's director. This is indeed an honor. I accept this in behalf of uh, over 2,000 youngsters. As Jarvis mentioned, there are a lot of professionals that have come through this program. When this program was organized, we, we never thought it would come to this point. It was to get some youngsters off the streets into an organized program. It just so happens, when you're young and you're learning how to dribble a basketball on an on a open dirt field with pebbles, and somebody comes and decides to bring you inside to a gym, that's a piece of cake. From that point, this program began to grow into the number, number two youth program in the United States of America. I thank you all for this honor. God bless you. I can't remember ever seeing a program like Art Visions. Art Visions is a program about human rights and what better place for a program like this to originate from than the, the Cradle of Civil Rights, which is Birmingham, Alabama. We should spread the message and we should would go back and look at our history and say, look, this is Birmingham, Alabama and, and this is what uh, we struggled for, equal rights, equal justice. Art Visions is taking the lead in, in spreading that message throughout the state.
The uniqueness of this television series is that it's designed to respect everyone, imitating and stealing ideas from other artists and other organizations and other television series like Art Visions does not show respect for the arts and humanity.